Last night Jeff Samarjo struck out nine Reds over eight innings as the Giants rallied late to take game two of the series. With three straight wins San Francisco now sits on top of the National League West. Today they go for a series sweep and their fourth win in a row. Giants Reds and it's coming up next. We've got day baseball here in Cincinnati as we come to you from Great American Ballpark. This is the final game of the series and road trip Giants and Reds. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well the Giants have a chance with a win today to have a really nice trip and go four and two. It'll be up to a, a Jake Peavy who needs a good start right now so Peavy's on the hill. Well, he, he does need a good start right now. He comes into this game, and in 23 innings, he's given up 39 hits. That's a lot. He needs to calm that down, but he's in the right place. He has never lost to the Cincinnati Reds, 7-0 with an ERA in the low twos. And uh, a good game today. It would allow the Giants to have a sweep against the Reds, and they haven't done that since 1999. So, a lot at stake, and we know one thing about Jake Peavy. He's a great mutter. He's a mutter. No Posey, no Duffy. Some extra men getting some at bats today here in Cincinnati. When we come back, we will have the lineups in the first pitch right after this. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the baconlicious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota. It's Toyota time for big savings on legendary Toyota quality. Take a test drive today. Toyota, let's go places. Well, on this damp Wednesday afternoon, the Reds take the field. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The boardwalk is open. Visit beachboardwalk.com for park hours. 53 degrees here in Cincinnati. Winds at 14 miles per hour. Humidity's high. And it is cloudy and rainy. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Giants. It's a little different. It'll be Span 
Blanco Pence and Belt. Brandon Crawford on this road trip. He's had a good trip, followed by Gillespie and Brown. They get starts. Tomlinson instead of panic and Jake Peavy hitting ninth. On the hill tonight, or today rather, for the Cincinnati Reds will be the right hander Dan Straley. He's a swing man. This will be the seventh game he's been in. He's made three starts. 0 1 with a 3 3 8 ERA. 22 strikeouts in 24 innings. He's got good stuff. It's slow 90 ish. Uh, he's got a curveball, a slider, and a changeup, and he'll throw everything at you. He's a control pitcher. He's the kind of guy that you know wants to try and decide how hard you hit the ball. He's trying to get you off your back leg. That's that's a good at bat, and he wants to do it within three pitches. Lifetime against these Giants in one start, one and zero. He went six solid innings in his only outing against him, allowed four hits and allowed a run. So he knows San Francisco. So here's Denard Spann. And the first pitch of the ball game is up high. So we get started at 12:36. And Straley comes back with the next pitch, and it's a strike called by Jim Joyce. Marvin Hudson, James Hoy, Chad Fairchild. There they are, your umpires for today's game. Man takes a strike on the outside corner. He's got two hits and ten at bats in this series. One for five in the game last night. And he strikes out, and that's how this game gets started. Let's take a look at the Reds defensively, starting in their outfield from left to right. It's going to be Duvall, Holt, and Bruce. Good. Arms on the corner with Duvall and Bruce uh, above average. Cozart back in the lineup after dealing with some knee problems. He's joined by Suarez on the left side, Phillips and Votto on the right side, and Ramon Cabrera. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs today. So here's Blanco hitting at 333. He got a start in the game last night, knocked in a run. And he went one for four. Now he's been swinging it well. Jim Joyce, a solid low ball umpire. He will look for strikes. And you will get some high strikes as well. Ball back. If there's any criticism to Joyce, at times he can be a bit tight, but all in all, I think he's a guy that guys look forward to when he's behind the plate calling strikes, both hitters and pitchers. And the one two delivery and Blanco takes down low. Hunter Pence and then Belt. This game just underway here at Great American Ballpark. Straley's got just about two years big league time. He's 27 years old. Popped up. It'll be Kozart who puts it away two outs. All right, time for our Nissan keys to the game. Right now, we need Peavy to be Peavy. And for Jake Peavy, I mean, he's been giving up way too many hits 39 hits in 23 innings. And he needs to calm it down. But he's doing it against the right team today. He's never lost a game to the Reds 7 0 with a 2 3 9 lifetime ERA. Those are great numbers. And number two, Gillespie. Connor Gillespie in the, in the lineup getting his first start. He's in the sixth spot. That's an RBI spot. He needs to have a good day. Those are our Nissan keys to the game. Pence right out of bed with a big swing and a miss. Pence at 295 home runs, 23 driven in. Had an RBI yesterday as Straley working quickly. Throws the next pitch down low. Yeah, he's a good getaway day pitcher. He likes to get it and go. In the dirt off the shin guard of Cabrera. Two balls and one strike. Bay Area fans remember Dan Straley. He came up to the big leagues with the Oakland A's and he was part of the rotation for several years. His best year, 2013 with the A's, he had a 10 and 8 record with a 396 ERA. Then he went to the Cubs last year with the Houston Astros and this year here in Cincinnati. Two 
two and two. That's a good changeup. Just absolutely bottoms out. That's a circle change. And ten strikes out, and that'll end the inning. So nice inning for Straley. And that'll bring Jake Peavy to the mound. And the lineup that Jake Peavy will be facing, and it looks like this. It'll be Zach Cozart, who's back, and he's going to lead it off, followed by Tyler Holt. Joey Votto is going to be in the third slot, as always, followed by Phillips, Bruce, and Suarez. It'll be Adam Duvall, the former Giant. He'll hit seventh, Cabrera eighth, and Straley ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be the veteran Jake Peavy. Peavy in his 14th year at the big league level, 34 years of age, 6'180 pounder out of Catherine, Alabama. And when you take your bats against him, you're going to see a high 80s sinker. He's got a low three quarter release to throw a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. Likes to work quick. Lifetime against these Reds, he has been incredible. 7 0 in 12 starts with a 2.38 ERA. So here's Cozart. Off to a really good start, Cozart. 347, a couple of home runs, nine driven in. He's a good player, and he's got some power. Pops this one down the right field line and out of play. Holt and then Joey Votto. Reds are 10 and 17. They've lost the first two games in the series. Out of play again. They're eight. Let's see. I'm gonna make sure I get this right. Doesn't look like I wrote this down right. They're eight and seven at home and two and 10 on the road. And that's foul. Let's check out the Giants defense. What do you say? Starting the outfield from left to right, it's going to be Blanco, Span, and Pence. Crawford Gillespie on the left side of the infield with Matt Duffy getting a day off. Tomlinson and Belt on the right side, and Trevor Brown. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Buster Posey gets a day off. Got him. It's a good sign for PB to get swing and misses on that breaking ball. So Span struck out for the Giants to open up the inning, and Cozart does the same. So here's Tyler Holt. Holt came in to replace Billy Hamilton, who left the game yesterday due to an injury. And Holt would one for two yesterday. There's a pitch outside for a ball. He's got good speed. Guys take away the bunt at third base with Gillespie, the third baseman, playing even on the grass. And Holt will drag and push. 
with the bunt. PB, the 2007 Cy Young Award winner in the National League with the San Diego Padres. Three time All Star. Three and oh to the speedy Tyler Holt. Bono on deck. And a strike. Three balls in one strike. Maybe took a little off and poured it in for a strike. Out of play, Beebe goes after him again. It's now three and two. The numbers for Holt, as we mentioned, 348. Well, what does that work? He's eight for 23. Gillespie at third. Two outs. Joey Votto hit his third home run of the year Monday. And this is what it looked like. That was a 3 2 challenge right over the middle of the play from Johnny Cueto. But what he did with it is what was impressive because not only did he hit a home run, I mean, he put it up in the second tier of the Green Monster out in center field, and that's a blast. Had his worst month in his big league career in April. Really has had a slow start to get going. I want to ask you a question. I mean, this is Connor Gillespie's first start. How important was that first ground yeah, ball? And it wasn't really a routiner either. Here's the pitch to Votto, and he rifles this one foul. Not by much. Yeah, you, know, you want to get a ground ball, and you want to get it out of the way in the first inning if you can, and that's what happened. Plus, hey, a little damp day. There's the foul ball. Foul by about two feet. It's not just catching the ball, it's also throwing it. And he had a long throw to make. High and deep to left, starting to carry. And in front of the wall, Blanco puts it away. <laughs> July, gone. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get a free Giants all-season blanket. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details. The pitch to Belt and Belt pops this one. Out of play. 
Belt at 311, three home runs, 19 driven in. One for three last night with a walk. Three for four on Monday with a walk. He's always going to mix in one walk a game. Always. The breaking ball, nothing in two. Crawford on deck, and then Gillespie. So three left handed hitters facing Dan Straley. Yeah, we talked about the Nissan Keys. Not a bad idea to score first and score early with all the threat of rain around. Hey, we're shocked that this thing started on time. Belt, high drive, right field. It is out of here. And the Giants score first. It's one nothing. Right on cue. Home run number four for Belt. When you talk hitting with Brandon Belt, one of the things that he says he will do is he'll look speed. And it looked to me like he was sitting on something soft because a little breaking ball drops down right middle in at the knees, and he just golfs it out of here. Very quick swing. Very strong. He really is. And you're really not getting a normal carry. As you pointed out on the fly ball from Joey Votto, I mean, he had to earn that one. So here's Crawford hitting 258. And Crawford takes wide. For Straley, that's the fourth home run that he's allowed. And the next pitch is high. It's 2-0. Oh. You know, it's not a full house today, but the one thing about it, a ballpark, when it, it's filled up about 30%, when a guy hits a ball that loud, there's an echo to yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. And that was loud. See if Crawford's going to lay in the weeds on a 3 0 pitch. If not, it's 3 and 1. Three and two on the pitch right on the inside corner. Yeah, it's the, yeah there's the uh, the mics that pick up the crack of the bat. And you're pretty close from the backstop to the plate here. Foul! Look out! The search is on for the foul ball. Uh, this guy's running the. The five meter low hurdles to get to the ball. Yeah. Crawford, a big chopper to Votto, and Votto will take it himself. Check out the Giants grad pack. It's the perfect gift for a graduate this spring. You get tickets to two Giants games, plus a class of 2016 Giants cap with an orange tassel. And those packs start as low as 39 bucks. SFGiants.com slash Mini packs, the grad pack. One out, here's Gillespie. As Mike mentioned, Gillespie's first start. He's two for six. Now, he's a professional hitter. He can do a lot of things for you, and he's a contact guy. Reds play a shift on on the right side of the infield, but they've adjusted their defense on the right. We saw their lone infielder play the shortstop position. This is hit out into left center field. It'll be two outfielders converging, and Holt makes the catch. To finish that point. They, they really played the, le the lone infielder on the left side of the infield, the shortstop position, and the one pinch hit at bat that Connor Gillespie had. He had a little half swing to yeah. just take advantage and hit away a little bunt like a bunt swing. Got himself a base hit. So he has that type of back control is the whole point. Here's Brown hitting 258. And Brown flips one into right a base hit. That's going to allow Tomlinson to come up. 
All right, time now for our Togo's big play. The Togo's way. And last night, the big hit of the game was was Kelby Tomlinson. Started off in the second inning when he had a perfect drag bunt single, and then in the eighth, the biggest hit in a tie score. This was well, this was a steal that he had, and this was the swing and bunt that knocked in the go-ahead run. A lead that the Giants would not give back. We asked him if he did it on purpose, and he just smiled. We'll take that as a no. So here he is hitting 229. And a base hit to right field. Well, Peavy's going to get a chance to hit, and he's done okay in that department this year. He's three for six. He's got three runs batted in. Now we talk about the importance of early offense in a rainy day. With one on the board, they have a chance to put up a crooked number. And you cannot take the Giants' pitching staff for granted. They've got 11 RBIs collectively, and that leads the major leagues. And a strike. Another good two. Peavy's been good with runners in scoring position. One and two. Cueto knocked in a pair of runs in his first at bat on Monday. Samarja yesterday, 0 for 4. With one broken bat. And that'll end the inning. Belt puts the Giants on the board as he knocks out his fourth home run of the year. Giants strand a pair. As we head to the second inning, it's bye bye baby, one nothing Giants. Check out our Geico coat. It comes from Buster Posey on Jeff Samarja. He says, For me, 95 to 98 with sink off a 92 to 95 mile an hour cutter. Getting his slider over when he's behind in the count, occasionally mixing in a split. And there's a lot of different things he can do. Pretty good scouting report from Buster Posey. Well, <laughs> no secrets there, I will say. I mean, but I, that's the type of ball game. If you're a catcher, I mean, you, you love putting the finger down. I mean, that was a manly start from Jeff Samarja. Here's Phillips. Phillips takes a strike. He's at 271. A home run. Seven runs batted in. One for eight in the series.
High drive to left. This is home run number two gone. And just like that this game is tied. It's the first time Phillips has taken PB deep in his career. Down and in and just golfs it out. I mean very similar to the location that Brandon Bell hit his home run down and in. So here's Jay Bruce. Bruce at 244 with four home runs, 18 runs batted in. And he's two for 11 in his career against PB. And this is a rocket down the right field line. Pence gets to it. And for Bruce, it'll be a double. So here comes Eugenio Suarez. A home run and a double here to open up the second. Yeah, that home run for Brandon Phillips is a 188th home run. That's a lot of home runs. Yep. Again, down and in. And Jay Bruce, I mean, he didn't even get a lot of lower body in that either. Gives an idea how strong he is. Suarez fouls it to the backstop. Suarez in the series is 0 for 6. One one. Just inside, maybe not. One ball and one strike. Adam Duvall is on deck. A one-one game here in the second. Giants play Suarez pretty straight up. They take belt way off the line of first base. The really the only exaggeration to a standard defense. Say Suarez went around one and two. Marvin Hudson, the first base umpire. Marvin, the only one in this crew that we have not seen behind the plate. All right, did he go? Probably not. Uh, it sits right there on that equator of did he go or did he not go? Could go either way. Brown's going to have a word. Brown back behind the dish. Got Suarez thinking outside. We'll see if PB wants to come back in. It's two balls and two strikes. See where Brown sets up. And they're going to go away again. Span as this ball is hit well and gone. Home run number six on the season for Suarez, and it's three, a three to one ball game. Boy, the down and in location is the big offender right now for PB. The home run to Phillips, the double to Bruce, and now the home run to Suarez all in the same place, and they are not missing them. So here's Duvall. And he takes high, one ball and no strikes. Duvall at 
225. He hit his third home run of the season yesterday. Way outside and low, 2 and 0. Two balls and one strike. Not giving into the fastball count with the fastball. One thing about Trevor Brown, I mean, he's calling everything. Curveball, sliders, change-ups, two seam, four seam. He's trying to mix it up as best he can. Reds just are not getting fooled right now. And the one thing you cannot do in this ballpark, and we say it about Philadelphia, we say it about Coors Field, you cannot walk people here. It's just too live a yard, even on a cool day with rain. You have to make guys swing the bat. So a full count. Critical that Jake Peavy gives Bruce Bochy some innings. They get no day off. They go right into a homestand. Travel across country and remember the Giants on this road trip went from a 13 man pitching staff down to a 12 man pitching staff. Here's Ramon Cabrera, and it's one ball and no strikes. PB's last outing in New York, I mean, he had a real rough time in the third inning, so it was an early knockout. And the bullpen had to eat up six innings that night. No strikes to Cabrera. And a strike. To even the count. Foul. If you think back to PB's last start in New York and got to the third inning, and that was when the, the Mets put up 12 runs in that third inning. It was an inning that lasted over 40 minutes. And it's just grueling on a defense, especially in a cold environment. It's cold in New York. It's cool out there today. And those are things that managers think about. Got him. Second strikeout for Peavy, and here's Straley. Straley is 0 for 4 on the season. By the way, Cabrera had just been called up from Louisville on Monday. Devin Mezzarocco went on to disable this. 0 for 7 on his career. Bunt situation. 0 for 7 in a career that means you're bunting all the way through three strikes. And a strike to Straley with Belt and Gillespie charging down hard. And they're not figuring Straley to be too quick. And if they can crash in hard, they're really not fearful of him showing Bunton and going into a butcher boy. So they can be very aggressive. And he bunts that breaking ball foul. It's another good two. And if they can get a hard hit ground ball, they can possibly get the catcher Cabrera at second and then get a double play. And they'll be aggressive here, even with two strikes. 
don't believe he's going to be allowed to, to swing it. So Straley's out. Have to work on that a little bit this week. Yeah, you really need to work on that. If you're a pitcher, you have to be able to bunt. It's such an important out. And then just, you know, he's sitting too high. He's not getting his knees bent low enough. He's out of balance. And just not good form. It can all be improved. Cozart struck out in the first inning. And he takes wide one ball and no strikes. Two home runs in the inning. Actually in the full inning four home runs. Or make it three Phillips. Suarez for the Reds belt one for the Giants. The 1 0 delivery. This is hooked down the left field line. Gone. Just tucked in down the left field line. That's three home runs hit here in the second. I really didn't think that that ball was going to stay fair. I thought he hit it off the end of the bat. We talked about Kozar, man. One of the things the Reds liked about him and kind of rushed him to the big things is he's got some pop. A little hanging slider. And it's just a matter of if it was going to be fair. See ya. So here's Tyler Holt. And he takes up and in one ball and no strikes. So that's the third for Kozart. He now has 11 RBIs on the season. And a strike to Holt to bounced out to Gillespie. So the Giants know the deal. They got some work to do. Well, this is the ballpark to do it in, though. Gillespie will charge and catch it on the short hop, and that'll end the inning. Five runs, three home runs, and a double. Third inning coming up. Baseball on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Well, Tuesday, May 24th is the annual Bruce Lee Tribute Night. Your special event package will include a game ticket. See the Giants take on the 
Padres and a limited edition Bruce Lee Giants t-shirt. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. So here's Span. It's a 5-1 lead for the Reds. Span Blanco Pence and call strike. Span rips one down the right field line. I'll make sure I get this one right. Foul. Yeah, well. <laughs> Good job. Well done. Loud foul, I might add. Yeah, it's definitely a day to dress for rain. Out of play. Nice play. Had a bit. She didn't figure to get one up there today. Nope. A little pop up to the left that's right there to Duvall. So you want to know why I said I wanted to make sure this is from last year. Yeah. Let's see it again. And the pitch and Bell hits a high drive foul down the right field line and out of play. Gone. It went over the foul pole and it's a three run home run for Brandon Bell. How about that. Wow. <laughs> so nice. Spilled it. <laughs> I, had, I had visions when Span hit that ball. Blanco bunts a foul. Well, it was a hit in the clubhouse. They enjoyed it. Hey, isn't that our job? Just entertain? Yeah, it is. That was very entertaining. Probably not. The way I had envisioned it entertaining. One ball and one strike to Blanco. There's a strike. Stretty's throwing everything up there, which is how he has to pitch. Mixes four pitches in. Mixes speeds, mixes locations. So Blanco trying to get on here for Hunter Pence, base runners. That's what the Giants need here in the third. It's 5 1. Cincinnati. Out of play, it stays at two and two. And I think it's important to, to answer. Reds put five on the board in the bottom of the second. Put something up at the top of the third. Even if it's just one. It's true. This is lined to Duvall. Two down. You know, I don't think enough gets talked about the shutdown inning. Just what it means, especially when you get a quick one to get your team to hit. put a crooked number up on the board, get him back in the dugout to go hit it again. Here's Pence. Pence struck out on the first. The Giants fans. And a strike to Hunter Pence with belt on deck. Top of the third. Just a bit low. It's 
really trying to put a shutdown inning up there. Everybody in the Giants dugout trying to not allow him to do that. It's just a little thing about momentum, how it shifts from one dugout sure. to the next. Absolutely. Pence got a piece, so he'll see another pitch. Answer seven and seven on the road. They've had five games against teams, actually just two teams, the Brewers and the Reds in the National League Central, and they've won four out of five. Into center field, and this is right at Holt, and that'll end the inning. So Straley does indeed get the shutdown inning, and now Votto's going to lead things off. Time now for a greater coverage of baseball, and it's brought to you by T-Mobile. We go back to April 26th, 2012. Giants taking on the Reds, and it's the origin of the Giants' happy flight. The Giants down 5-3. One out top of the ninth, and Angel Pagan hits a three-run homer off Sean Marshall. Giants would win, and they would go home happy. This ball is drilled into deep right center field and off the top of the wall. Span picked it up and then dropped it, and Votto on one pitch is standing at second base. Down and in. The stiff extra base hit, Mike. He set the target in the outside corner and he's just missing across the plate. Two doubles, three home runs. They're just not missing his mistakes to location. Well, Phillips is the one who started it all by homering down the left field line in the second inning. And that tied the score. Pitch high and wide, and it's one ball and no strikes. Five hits now for the Cincinnati Reds. So we're going to miss one ball and one strike with Jay Bruce on deck. Back, so PB challenged them, and Phillips hit it off the backstop, one and two. You know, the thing about 
extra base hits when they start coming in bunches boy everybody in that dugout starts thinking they're going to hit one. Yeah the, the thought of laying down a bunt really doesn't exist after that. See you later. And that's a base hit up the middle. Votto's going to be held up. Phillips picks up his second hit. And now the Reds have runners at the corners with nobody out. And here's Jay Bruce. Bruce doubled down the right field line in the second. And it's hard to watch a guy like PB go through it. I mean, he's been a warrior for 14 years. He's done everything in the game. He's been one of the premier pitchers in this game his whole career. Cy Young Award winner, All Star, been part of two World Championship teams. Outside to Bruce. But the hitters let you know. It's that simple. He had allowed 39 hits coming into this ball game in 23 innings. And already today, with nobody out here in the third, he's given up six, and just one of them has been a single. And that pitch is down low, so it's two balls and no strikes. So the bullpen is quiet so far. Well, PB knows the deal, and, and I'm sure Bochi called him in and told him, like, we need innings out of you no matter what. There's a strike. Generous strike. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Browns throw, and now they've got Phillips in a rundown, and they'll tag Phillips. I don't know what Phillips is talking about. As Crawford went sprawling. Well, what a nice play from Trevor Brown's perspective. And that ball did not stay in his glove a very long time. So I don't know if Phillips is saying he didn't touch me, which I don't think he feels he did. Phillips is looking over at third base. And I see what he's saying. He didn't touch him, but he went out of the baseline. And I think he did. Maybe from that angle, looked like he did make contact on the chest. But they're going to take a look at it. Brian Price, Red Skipper, talking it over with Jim Joyce. I mean, you could question a tag play, which is basically what this becomes. Phillips looking over to see. If Vada was going to break from third. I think he got him right there. I don't think that would be overturned just from that angle. Well. What would they overturn? I, I, mean, I don't know. Uh, Crawford could have got up and easily. Continued to play. Yeah, I mean, once they called him out, the play was dead. I don't understand. Nice play by Brown. It's three and two. Oh, I'll say that was tough. If you're going to question a tag play, don't you have to at least make it to the bag? Yeah. Actually, I think Brown can 
can think is shin guards and legs and toes and everything else. Just get a, a chunk of your body out in front of it. Anything you can do to keep that ball in front of you. Infield is in. As Bruce stays alive. So it's a caught stealing for Phillips. And here it's three and two to Jay Bruce. And he got him. Got him with a challenge fastball at 89. So that's the strikeout he was pitching for with a runner at third base and less than two outs. So here's. A Eugenio Suarez who hit a long home run in the left center field in the second. Johnny Cueto watching. Rooting on his teammate. And a bit outside for a ball. Johnny Cueto knows better than anybody that this is a ballpark where a big crooked number can go up against you in a heartbeat. He gave up six in his outing in game one of the series in a 46 pitch third inning. But then that was it. That was it. Came back then and got two good innings of work after that to save the bullpen. There's a strike. But you know we always talk about Coors Field about you know, how when a big inning starts to go against you you just don't know how to stop it and you could say the same thing about this ballpark too. Yeah, you can. As offensive as it is. Lifted high and foul and out of play. It's one and two. Yeah, bring a towel. It's a good day to bring your towel. Bring your towel, get a ball. Flip job in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. So Suarez knocks in Votto after all the hard work Peavy did. To get two outs, and it's now six to one. Uh, you're right. That's the one that hurts, especially when he got him in a two strike count with two outs. He's thinking, all right, I can pitch through this. And pitch through that leadoff double. Now you got to dig deep. So here's Adam Duvall, who drew a walk in the second inning. Suarez has got four steals, so you got to keep an eye on him. As Duvall cues this one off the end of his glove, and everybody's going to be safe. His belt couldn't hang on to it. Base hit? That can't be a base hit. So it'll be an error on belt. I think they called base hit initially. He was so far off the bat going to his left or to his right that he couldn't get back because if he could have gotten back in time, they may have had a chance to get the out with Duvall. Here's Cabrera, and Cabrera waves at the first pitch, and it's 0 1. Well, what it means is extra pitches for Peavy. He's got Suarez at second and Duvall at first. Oh, and two.
PB out in front, no balls, two strikes. 6 1 Reds. Skied to right. Foul territory, belt. And that'll end the inning. Reds put one on the board through three. 6 1 Cincinnati. Time now for our Ford Right Choice. We have a flashback to last night. Jeff Samarja came in here and absolutely was dominant in a nine strikeout performance through eight solid innings in a very well pitched, well played ball game by both teams. Giants come out on top 3 1. And this guy had everything to do with it. Second career victory against these Reds and his fourth victory of the year for the Giants. And afterwards, Buster Posey said, that's as good a stuff as I've caught. Our Ford right choice. Here's Belt. Belt takes high. Overshift is on for Belt. He homered in the second. Giants had the lead. Bounces this one to Votto. And Votto goes to the bag. And here's Crawford. <laughs> Crawford bounced out to Votto in the second. Down low to Crawford, Connor Gillespie on deck. I heard Crawford came off the field after that. Play involving Brandon Phillips, and he was not really smiling coming into the Giants' dugout. Pitches wide, two balls and no strikes. Straley about to throw pitch number 53, and he does, and a swing and a miss, and a pitch down and in two and one. Yeah, he's not going to give in to you ever. Two will break a ball with a five run lead. I mean, it's just not his game. He's going to pitch his game. Pitch the way he feels he needs to pitch to get people out. And tight three and one. Just missed. Crawford trying to do some damage, jumped way out in front. The look he had when he came back to the Giants' dugout. 
Not a whole lot upsets Brandon Crawford. He's about as mild tempered as anybody I've seen in the Giants uniform. Crawford and another ground ball to bottom. Two outs. And here's Gillespie. <laughs> Connor Gillespie hit a fly ball to center field in the second. Way outside. And so be at home tomorrow night against the Colorado Rockies. And Matt Kane will be on the mound. And a foul out of play. Rockies, Blue Jays. That's your homestand. Yeah, a quick week. Four Rockies, three Blue Jays. The guy's a happy, happy, happy boy. Got himself a cold one or a baseball. Life is good. Gillespie. A little half swing. It's one and two. And Jens will be back out on the road. Have four in Arizona and then three in San Diego. So they'll be playing against the West for a while. Well, I think that four game series in Arizona is going to be interesting given what happened the last time the Giants saw the Diamondbacks in San Francisco. They got swept the four game at home. Yeah. Although there hasn't been a revenge chant just yet. But give it time. <laughs> we'll pay close attention to that. Gillespie hammers one into the gap and it's hit very well and it's gone. And it's six to two. He's playing like it's in July. Yeah, this is two strikes, two outs. Little elevation at the belt and that quick swing. And this is the one thing about Connor Gillespie. He gets the bat head to the ball quickly. Very compact hack. Built for average in here. He flexes his muscles. Pumps it out of here to right center. His first of the year. Right over Ollie's bargain outlet. That's where Marty Brenneman shops. <laughs> Marty Brenneman, the Hall of Fame broadcaster here with the Cincinnati Reds. So I didn't know that about him. No, he, he can get all of his T-shirts there. He's got T-shirts from the 70s, 80s, 90s. And one of our favorites. Swing. Hit one over Ollie's bargain outlet. You get a free Marty Brennan T-shirt. It's great. You have one of those. I do. Marty and I didn't even have to. I paid for it. The Smithsonian asked me for it. I said it, no. Wasn't cheap either. Popped him up. And it'll be Phillips. And that'll end the inning. Gillespie gets his first of the year. And check to see where it goes. Gone. Free T-shirt. Bye-bye, baby. 6-2. Reds. <laughs>
stories on this date way back in 1966, 50 years ago today at the stick. Willie Mays hit career home run number 512. He hit it off of Claude Osteen of the Dodgers. Mays passed Mel Ott for most career home runs in National League history, and that happened on this date in 1966. How about that? Candlestick before they enclosed it. That's great footage. It's not footage you see very often, and they made him a cake. 512. Recognize those old lockers at our old clubhouse? Yeah, same ones we had. They didn't change. Uh uh. Off Claude Osteen. Had Claude as a pitching coach in Philadelphia. Gomer. Good guy. Straley with a swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Willie Mays going to have a birthday this Friday. Going to be 85 years old. Down the right field line and out of play. Got him. And that'll bring up Cozart. Fifth strikeout for Jake Peavy, all by swing and miss strike threes. You guys got to be thrilled to get Cozart back in the lineup today. Get Brown. He may have got his right shoulder. Let's take a look at this. You say what you want. I mean, you put a pad over there. I guess it helps a little bit, but not much. You get hit right on that shoulder point. You get a sensation that goes down your arms and explodes through your fingertips, and then it goes the other way up through one ear and out the other. It, it lights your bell. Let me tell you. But I guess it'd have been worse if the pad wasn't there. Playable for Belt. And he puts it away. He always talk about it's nice to hear an outfielder call a pop up when an infielder is going back in the outfield on it. You like that. Outfielder who's coming into the ball to take the pop. Well, same thing for that play right there for a, a catcher. He's begging for a corner infielder to come in and call it off, and Belt did. Here's Tyler Holt. Holt with a healthy rip, and he fouls it straight back. Comes back with a high fastball. One ball and one strike. 6 2. Reds here in the fourth inning. Foul back. One and two. Seventy pitches for PB. It's a little over where he should be. You want to ideally be 60 or less at the end of the fourth. Second inning cost him a lot of pitches. Yes, it did. And now asking for time is Holt. As he gets tired of waiting. But he stays right in the box. The one-two. Look out. Two and two. 
change up. And that's the last thing you want to hit a guy with is a change up. Pokes it to right and standing there is Pence and that's going to end the inning. So Peavy with his second one two three inning for the Giants. Tomlinson will lead it off. Silver Slugger three pack access to three games, including the June 25th game against the Phillies, and we're giving away to Madison Bumgarner bobblehead to the first 40,000 fans, courtesy of Chevron. The pack also includes a limited edition coin commemorating our three recipients of the Silver Slug Award. For more information, go to three pack sfgiants.com slash mini packs. Tomlinson had a base hit in the second inning. He tried to lead off the inning by doing the same here in the fifth as he pops this one out of play. The big inning for the Reds, the second where they hit three home runs. Peavy and then Span and then Blanco, Pence, and Belt. Straight to wants to do baseball. Now Everybody's finally paying attention, and he'll get a new one. Gone are the days where the umpire looked at it and threw it back. Yeah. They now didn't. you just take it and you throw it out on your own. Just see you later. And uh, Tomlinson is out swinging. He got a piece, but Cabrera hung on. Fourth strikeout. I mean, I can remember pitching a whole inning with a ball. Yeah. That'll never happen. Well, again. Not, then what happened is, is Major League Baseball just didn't trust you guys anymore. Well, I, I think it was less trust. I mean, there was a generation that knew how to use a scuff. This generation now, they don't know how to use it because they never allowed to. PV, it's a high fly ball to right. Bruce is there as he goes back and makes the catch. You get a sinker ball out there. Ground ball comes, ball comes back to him. Another ground ball, ball comes back to him. I mean, it would stay in the game. I mean, Rick Russell, who was a sinker baller, I mean, that was commonplace. But now you hit a ground ball at shortstop, likely that ball's coming out of the game. Or the pitcher will look at it and say, hey, this guy's scuff on it. It's got to go. That, yeah, I, we've seen that. That drives me crazy. If you get a scuff on a baseball, that's free movement from God. If you know how to use it, it's, it's wonderful. 
free movement. Here's Span who takes high. If you have a scuff, you hold the ball out towards the hitter, and you've got a scuff on the right side of the ball, the ball's going to move left. If you hold the scuff on the left side, the ball's going to move right. If you put your fingers on the scuff, ball's going to sink. It's movement for free, and all you have to do is throw a fastball with it. Well, then what pitchers should have done is just scuffed it on their own. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you should say that. A couple guys have got themselves in the Hall of Fame doing that. Two balls and one strike to span. Span bluffed it one, takes a strike, two and two. That's when you bluff a butt. You think to yourself, that's the best pitch I'm going to get to hit all day. It's like every time. Look out. Did get him in the toe. I think it did. That's the last thing this really wanted to do. And with a breaking ball, just right off the toes, right foot. I think guys with speed, like Span, they'd rather get hit in the head than their feet. You're right. Here's Blanco. Blanco's popped out and lined out. Hunter Pence is on deck. And the first pitch is high. It's one ball and no strikes. In at third is Suarez. And a quick toss and back easily is Span. Not really a steal situation here, two outs down four. But Span's got a green light, and if he thinks he can get a good jump off straight, he'll go. He never has to apologize for that. Reds will respect his ability to steal a base. Giants, I mean, they've <laughs> been on a roll on this road trip stealing bases. They've stolen nine bases in their last three games. They stole seven in their first 25 games. But it has everything to do with who's pitching or who's catching. And Correct. But there's the tale of the stolen bases. Outside, two balls and a strike. Giants would like nothing better than to get another base runner on for Hunter Pence. First pitch, 53 degrees. On the ground to Phillips, and that's going to end the inning. Giants strand a runner. It'll be the beef coming up facing Peavy.
And the Giants take on the Blue Jays May 9th through the 11th. Two special Heritage Nights during the series. The 9th is Korean Heritage Night. The 10th is Japanese Heritage Night. And then Wednesday's Day Baseball at 1245. SFGiants.com slash tickets. Here's Votto. Votto's hit a ball to the wall and left that was caught. And then he doubled off the base of the wall in right center field. TV to the plate. And Votto with a healthy rip, and it's one ball and one strike. Just inside, maybe high. Phillips. And then Jay Bruce. Six two Reds. Bottom of the six. The two one to Votto. Crawford behind the bag. Throws him out. So they're going to give PB an assist on that. And here's Phillips. Pitch. They try to go up and in. It leaks out over the plate away. And PB just does get a, a little leather on it. Not that Brandon Crawford needed a lot of help. He was pretty much set up in the right spot prior to the pitch. So give Ron Wotus a pat on the back for placing his defense there. Phillips a home run and a single. And a strike in its 0 and 1. Pitch just misses one ball and one strike. Eleven hits in the game, seven for the Reds, four for the Giants. Jay Bruce to follow, and this is fouled out of play. Oh, he just missed that. Take a look at the second inning, and this was the one he did hit. Down and in, and then just yanks it right over the wall. Guy used his hat to make a basket catch. <laughs> he had his glove in his left hand. He didn't have it on. Impressive play. Very impressive. Two and two. Hey, nice job last night. We had a chance to get back to the hotel and then watch the Warriors play. The Warriors pick up a win. That was unbelievable what we witnessed last night with those guys. Nice comeback. Foul off of Brown. Yeah, they just never out of it. Uh, they're as tough mentally as a team as I think I've ever seen. It's great. When you get to the Giants clubhouse the next day after a Warrior game, and they're talking about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Game ended about 1.15 our time. Also, at, at the same time, we watched you go channel surfing a little bit of the Sharks, which that didn't turn out as well as the Warriors did. So Phillips is gone. Six strikeouts for PB, and that'll bring up Jay Bruce. You know, Dave Rigetti, you, you always look him in the dugout. He's always grinding for his pitchers, always. I mean, he, he's always got that look of concern. And last night, I mean, he, he carried the same look of concern back. To the hotel when he was watching the Sharks. He's a huge Sharks fan. He's a season ticket holder for many years. That's going to be out of play. And I just think it's so cool in the Bay Area. You know, 
the professional players that we have, and we have some pretty special teams in the Bay Area, they all pay attention to what the other team is doing, and they root for them. And the Giants very much into what's happening with the Sharks and their playoff run, and of course the Warriors. So good luck. Bruce out in front. It's nothing in two. Good changeup. One of the best changeups he's throwing today. Brown's going to go out and have a word. That's not what PB wanted. So PB kind of slumped his shoulders and Brown immediately stopped. He did not want to have a meeting. Well, Brown can't figure out what he wants to throw. I mean, he's gone through the signals. A bit perplexing. For a young catcher to catch a 14 year veteran. Foul back. Now, PB struck out Bruce in a high fastball in his last at bat. I think he wanted to go back out there and try and do it, especially after he got the second strike with the changeup. And I also think, Mike, that he felt like he was in a good rhythm. That's why he didn't want to have anybody come out. One two pitch to Bruce and he got him. PB's best inning. Through five. Giants have work to do. Reds lead six four. That podcast is live on CSNBayArea.com. You can log on each week as insider Alex Pavlovich talks baseball. And you can also check it out on iTunes. Alex Pavlovich, a good man, hard worker. We like him. 6 2 Reds as we head to the top of the sixth inning here. And Strelly getting set to face Hunter Pence. And the Gamer Babes are here. Welcome. We missed you. Answer the big swing and you're going to miss. Pence is struck out and flied out against Dan Straley. Belt to follow. Mm. 
No swing. Marvin Hudson. I don't know if Pence got a piece of that or not, but it jumped out of the glove of Cabrera. It's two balls and two strikes. I don't think he's picking up Strelly's changeup at all. He's had Pence reaching in a lot of swings today. And that has not been the case here the last two weeks. He's been pretty locked in. And it's been very difficult to get him off his back leg. Giants to take a walk here. They need base runners. Hammered into center field. And Holt's going to run it down. That was not an easy play. I mean, that nut was roasted. And it was knuckling as it was heading out to Holt. <laughs> And you know how hard it is to hit a knuckleball. How about trying to hit or catch a knuckleball? It's hit about 100 miles an hour. And that was the challenge for Holt. It was all said and done. He puts it in the sweet spot in that glove, but you can't hit a ball any harder than that. Belt is homered and he's bounced out to first. The one one to belt and belt fouls this one down the left field line and out of play. Mostly night games today. Yeah the only other day game is in Pittsburgh Cubs Pirates going at it. Belt's home run of the second led off the second his fourth of the year. Breaking ball down and in. Well, two Giants home runs today. Gillespie hit the other one in the fourth. And the walk to Belt. Nice at bat. There's more day games going on at out that check. New York, Atlanta have a day game going. Milwaukee is hosting the Angels. Well, you're just off by three. That's all. <laughs> Not a big deal. Hey. Over and unders, if you're off by three, that's fine. It's all right. Four? Eh, I don't know. Way to pick me up. Oh, wait, there's one in Kansas City, too, hosting the. Uh -oh. So it is a bad day. The Nationals. Yeah, that just made it a bad day. Crawford waiting and he pops it up. Duvall coming in. Two outs and here's Connor Gillespie. Wait there's more. Uh oh. Oakland going to host Seattle and San Diego going to host Colorado. So how was my first scout report? What there's only one other day game. Yeah. See I think you got the wrong paper this morning. Yeah. I, do. I, I think you got yesterday's paper. <laughs> I think I got last year's paper. It was under my bed this morning. There's a strike to. Connor Gillespie. Gillespie's home run went into right center field. Lifted to left for Adam Duvall. 
So after the walk, Straley retires the next two. Bottom half of the six with Suarez to lead things off. on CSN Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota. It's Toyota time for big savings on legendary Toyota quality. Take a test drive today. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. Here in Cincinnati, it's a 6-2 lead for the Reds. The Roebling Suspension Bridge. I think we walked over that a couple of years ago. High fly ball center field. It's Span who puts it away. One out. One pitch, one out. As you like to say, a gift. It really is. It's like you're starting the inning off with one out. Duvall has walked. And he's reached on a belt error. And it's ball high. One ball and no strikes. 90 pitches for Jake Peavy. We get his last inning. His pitcher spot is due to bat third in the top of the seventh for the Giants. Swing and a miss. It's a ball in a string. Hunter Strickland starting to dig in. Make sure you get it the way you like it, Strick. You better believe it. <laughs> Here's the, the one one. Ball back, one and two. But PV did what he had to do. He had to get some innings under the books. And there in the second inning, when he had a five run second, you didn't know if he was going to be able to do it. One ball and two strikes. The ball steps out. That's hooked foul. Oh, nice play by our ball dude. Let's work on that toss though. I think that's a better bench than what they get at AT&T. I don't think the seating part is quite big enough. Imagine just sit on a bicycle out there. <laughs> that's right. It's like a tin speed. A lot of play. Do they even have 10 speeds anymore? See, I want to see. Well, leather there's a weight limit there. You uh, can't weigh more than 120 pounds. That's true. Uh, a leather chair that 
swivels this would be good. That's a pretty big kid right there. Duvall hits another one. It is gone. That's his second of the series. Fourth on the year, and it always means a little more when you can do them against the team you got traded from. And it's a hanging slider. And it's just right out there on a tee, fourth home run of the day that PB has given up. Here's Cabrera. Cabrera struck out and popped out. Coming in, PB had only allowed two home runs on the year. One ball and one strike. This is lifted out to Blanco and left. Night against Jeff Samarja, who watched the ball get hit in the stands, and a fan lost his wallet. That's it. Absolutely. This man says, that. <laughs> "Thank you very much." Hey, credit cards laying all over the track. If Span would have put that wallet in his back pocket and played with it. Would not have been the first time a major league ball player would have had a wallet in his back pocket. No, Rico Cardi. Rico Cardi, and, and he had a really thick wallet too. Like he had a hundred dollar ones in his wallet, and that'll end the inning. Duvall hits his fourth of the year. This is what it looked like, or this is what the wallet looked like. Yeah, the old Rico Cardi trick. 7 2 Reds. In summary, brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Jake Peavy's allowed four home runs. That's the third time he's done that in his career. Belt and Gillespie have homered. Gillespie has hit his first. And Straley's done a good job. He's walked one, he struck out four. 
That's your Toyota game summary. I guess really the thing that we're amazed about most is the fact that we were sure that this game was going to be delayed. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to be here in the last three innings, but the start of it was in big jeopardy. Ground takes a strike. Well, this is the same situation in, in New York on Sunday. I mean, yeah. they said, there's no way you're going to play this game. We left this hotel in downtown Manhattan, drove out to the ballpark. Brown hits it high and foul and out of play. And uh, the game was delayed two minutes. So, I mean, we were told basically yesterday that there was no chance that this was going to be played. And yet we haven't had a delay. Knock on wood, knock on wood. And that's the one day you don't want to be delayed is getaway day, especially going back home. Brown got a piece to stay alive. Giants want to put together a rally. They're been really good at coming back in games. They need five runs to tie. Yeah, get on base, keep the line moving, see where it goes. Brown, a little check swing pop up to Vado. Ball is, ball is not carrying the race. Wind did not help that ball whatsoever. Here's Tomlinson. Tomlinson is single and struck out. Tomlinson rolls it foul. Mac Williamson is on deck. Strickland. Mark Gardner, open coach. So you say, what does a bullpen coach do? Well, Mark Gardner, number one. I mean, he's a pitching coach, and he is one of the better mechanics around. But when you're a bullpen coach and games going on, guy starts to get up. You start talking to him about who he's going to face. There's a base hit. Second hit for Tomlinson. You know what the bullpen coach did in the years that we played? Kept the guys from screwing around too much in the bullpen. He was like the, the policeman. I mean, it's, I mean, it's so much more sophisticated in that regard now. Way more sophisticated. And Gardner, he'll also watch how many throws a guy makes to get loose, I and mean, that's all. It's all chronicled. I mean, they they, they saved that day. Yeah, in our day, the bullpen coach was also the, the catcher. Yeah, pretty much, that's what the bullpen coach was. So here's Williamson. So there's a lot of dialect going on between Gardner and whoever the pitcher is as they get loose, getting their their plans going as to how they're going to try and go after guys. Strike call to Mac Williamson. Mac started on Monday, the day he got called up. He went 0 for 2, scored a run. He was tearing it up in Sacramento. And that's a healthy rip, folks. It's nothing in two. It's the kind of swing a guy takes. You can almost feel the wind hit you in the forehead if you're pitching to it. Mm -hmm. Did he get Cabrera on the backswing? I think he, he did. did. Watch the bat come around. Yeah. Ah, kidney. Cabrera gets dinged. Better look here. So it's 0 and 2. Never quite sure whose fault that is. If it's the hitters, the catchers, or it could it may not be either of them. There's a lot of hitters that know they have big back swings, and they'll tell a catcher, hey, I, you know, be look out, and the catcher will back up.
Denard Span is on deck. Likely to be Straley's last inning as he's on the 105 count with his pitch total. Williamson chops it foul. In the changeup, which has been a good pitch for Straley all afternoon. He's riding that thing hard. I mean, that's his strength, is that he can throw anything at any time and will. So Singrani has slowed things down in the Reds' bullpen. Singrani's the only lefty that the Reds have. Williamson with a base hit to right field. Well, That's one of those where you better hustle down the line. Well, with Jay Bruce's arm, you're right. <laughs> So here's Spin. Nice opposite field, two strike at bat. I tell you what, he makes contact loud. It, it, <laughs> it's louder than most. So Brian Price, you no, know, that's not Brian Price. Mark that's Riggins. Mark Riggins. So it, Australia's going to see another hitter. I thought with the left handed hitting. Denard Spann and Gregor Blanco due to come up here. I thought you might see Singrani, which is why they had him down there getting heated up. Well, this meeting on the mound is brought to you by Ring Central. Business communications made simple. But he lives to see another hitter. You get the reprieve when the pitching coach comes out. When the manager comes out, it's pretty much all she wrote. Span was hit by a pitch in the fifth. It got hit on the foot. Before that, he'd struck out and flied out. And he shoots this one foul. Tomlinson and Williamson are your base runners. Price trying to avoid the bullpen. Well, I mean, they set a record, a major league record last night. 21 straight games, the bullpen has allowed a run. It has really been an Achilles heel with this Reds team this year. And that is a painful way to lose when you have a lead late in a ball game and your bullpen cannot hold it. Three balls and one strike. Gregor Blanco is not going to face Dan Straley. Out and that's ball four. Well, Bruce Bochy's got some some people on the bench that he can use if this is a left-hander. Gregor Blanco walks over towards the Giants bench. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up in Brake Experts. We'll be back.
Fans had the bases loaded. Buster Posey's going to hit. And Tony Singrani, the new pitcher for Cincinnati. This is what he has done in 14 games 4 0 9 ERA, 13 strikeouts in 11 innings. The one blemish, the walks, the nine walks. I mean, he's got great stuff. You'll see low to mid 90s with the fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. Twenty twelve. Latos, game five, the deciding game. And that was a grand slam. Well, that's the ideal situation for Bruce Pochi to play the trump card of Buster Posey. I mean, you know he's going to get pitched to here with the bases loaded. And that was good history. Buster last night, three for four, three doubles. Two for four on Monday, so he's hot. And he takes a breaking ball down low. Straight away. And we've seen a lot of straightaway defensive positioning from the Reds in this three game series. Dramatically different than what the Giants saw against the Mets and certainly what they saw against the Padres. The Padres were extreme in their defensive positioning. Into right center field. Holt over. And in front of the wall, he makes the catch. Everybody tags up, and scoring is Tomlinson. Buster Posey, a sacrifice fly. Ball is jumping today. So it winds up being a productive out. They're still looking for that one big swing in the bat that really gets them to believe in that dugout. Seems Ronnie with two outs, he doesn't have to pitch to Hunter Pence. He does not. But he is definitely the type of pitcher that believes in his stuff and he doesn't back down from any hitters. He'll go at you. A strike that was missed by Cabrera. Well, maybe Zingrani's stuff is moving that that much. Oh, I mean, he's got great movement, great late finish on his fastball. I and mean, we saw that when we first saw him. And there are times when he'll go out there and he'll he won't throw anything but the fastball. You can tell you it's coming. Pence a big chopper and Phillips and they just got him and that's going to end the inning.
Network Telecast is presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. It's a 7-3 lead for the Reds. It's time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Hunter Strickland coming in for the 12th time this year. No record yet. 482 ERA. 11 strikeouts and nine and a third against three walks with 11 hits and nine and a third. You'll see mid to high 90s with the fastball velocity. He will four seam and two seam the fastball. It's kind of a slurvy slider and uh, a split. Go get him. Here's Cozart who takes outside for a ball, 1 0. Cozart hit a two run home run in the second. And a bit tardy, and it's a one ball and one strike. Williamson stays in the game, he's now in the left. Fans got room in center field. And on the third pitch of the inning from Strickland, Cozart is retired, and that'll bring up Tyler Holt. Has bounced out twice and he's flied out to right. Low 1 0, Joey Votto on deck. Strickland, a big guy, 6'4, 230, broad shoulder, built for the fastball. You look at his motion. It's very compact. He's not a, a pitcher that gets out of balance in his motion, stride step towards his target. And when you can do that and throw 97, I mean it's it's a plus. Down low. One pitch that has really been inconsistent for him lately has been that break of very compact and balanced. He has no problem repeating his arm stroke. And Holt shoots that one foul. He's a little upset with himself that he didn't do more with it. Well, he was on it. And that's the problem with having an inconsistent breaking ball, is it? Reds and everybody else, they're not looking for it. They're sitting up there looking for one thing. And what I think he has to do is he has to throw breaking balls for strikes more, especially early in the count. Throw them for strikes. Don't think guys are going to swing at him against you because they're up there looking for one thing. They're looking for the fastball. Oh, good pitch. If they had set up on that outside corner, it may have been strike three because it went across the plate. As I mentioned, he also has a split, but it's not a pitch that he feels confident in yet in a 3 2 count. We don't see it unless he's way ahead in the count. So when you pigeonhole yourself into a fastball counts, big league hitters don't care how hard you throw. And that hits Strickland in the back, and he throws him out. That was a direct hit, and he smoked it. I put down one three and it really didn't tell the whole story. It does not. Three two, you gotta go to the fastball. He's looking for it. You're taking off swing. You're trying to go back up the middle like you're taught. I mean, Holt does everything right. And all he gets out of it is putting a bruise on Strickland. There's not a pitcher on this planet that won't give up a 
Bruce to get it out. So here's Vado. Vado takes down low. And at 97, they're not looking for him with no, the fastball. Absolutely. That's why you don't have to be throwing your strikeout pitch in a first pitch with a breaking ball. Throw it across the plate, elevate it. Hunter Pence, and Hunter Pence is going to come in and reach down and make the catch. So Hunter Pence. Made the adjustment and that'll end the inning. For the Giants, Belt is going to lead things off. in bayarea.com slash AST for the 2016 All-Star Teachers brought to you by Provident Credit Union. It's the 10th season of the CSN All-Star Teacher Program. It recognizes that teachers make a difference. The winner receives 20,000 bucks for his or her school. So vote CSN bayarea.com slash AST. So here's Belt Giants down four. Belt facing Singrani. And it's low, one ball and no strikes. Belt, Crawford, Gillespie, three lefties. Belt fouls at bat. We mentioned earlier, Belt, a walk every game. Well, he walked in the sixth. Ross Ollendorf, the right hander. Just starting to get loose. Nothing frantic about his pace right now. Derek Law. Heating up, he will pitch the eighth. Belt shoots one into right field, a base hit. Bruce headed over. Belt will stop at first. Yes, yeah, not an arm you want to challenge there. No. Leave well enough alone with that one. Well, yeah. you're down four runs here. You don't want to be throwing out at second base by one of the strongest arms and more accurate arms in baseball, Jay Bruce. Plus, Belt was thrown out at third in New York and thrown out at second yesterday. Just yeah, just let it be. Let it be. Pull the reins back oh, a little bit. Oh, no. Big horse.
So Mark Riggins going to come out. Have a little chat about Brandon Crawford. I think they really need to give Ollendorf a whole lot of time out there. I mean, no, this is a Jimmy Swagger. Little pep talk. All right, good to go. Belt has no lead at all. Nor in this situation should he. Crawford takes a strike. Just an easy 93. Well, Singrani's a guy, I mean, you could do anything with him. Pitch him as a lefty out of the pen. You could start him. Could be a long man for you. They get one. That's it. Only because Phillips couldn't hang on to it cleanly. So Crawford beats the relay, and here's Gillespie. A rare bobble. And even with the bobble, they still managed to get a throw off. Yes, they did. I thought off the crack of the bat, slam dunk. You don't expect a bobble from a gold glove second baseman. Home run in the fourth. Second Giants home run, but the first one to go out of the ballpark. First home run as a Giant was an inside the Parker. So he'll remember that one. Plus, it was a two strike at bat. You know, home run at a two strike count, it always feels better, especially if you take on a gap. Out of play. New baseball for Zingrani. Guy yeah, brought his glove out of bed. That guy didn't, and he got the ball. It's not right. No. Close. It's one and two. <laughs> well, <laughs> change seats, change seats. There's no runs in these seats. These guys are clearly bored. Absolutely bored. Somebody needs to run up there with a hot dog vendor or the cotton candy or something. Yeah. They are or a pretty girl one or the other. They just turned into the Jamaican bobsled team. And uh, they are finding a way to entertain themselves. It's. One and two. And that is going to be a double play. Four six three on the double play. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It remains seven three.
Well check out Giants Baseball Live with the MLB.com at bat app. You can stay up to the moment at any moment with this app. Download MLB.com at bat. The number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Derek Law is the new pitcher. Bored <laughs> stiff. <laughs> All right. Well, you should be paying attention to this guy, Derek Law, the new pitcher for the Giants. Yeah. Eighth time that he's come in. Seven strikeouts in four innings. Come on. Let's sit up for that. Mid 90s fastball, curveball slider change it. Phillips rolls it foul. Phillips a couple of hits, a home run in the second. 7 3 Reds here in the bottom of the eighth. So two pitches, two pitches, curveball last slider, one, last one up. Derek Law threw his minor league career average just about two strikeouts an inning. I mean, he had unbelievable strikeout numbers. His career derailed because of a Tommy John surgery he had to have. Tomlinson to belt and a nice play. Phillips hit it well. One out. Everything about that play was the big legs. <laughs> Here's Jay Bruce. A double and a couple of strikeouts for Jay Bruce. That's going to move some people around. Well, that makes the most sense. Bring your third baseman over, make him play in the outfield, leave your shortstop on the left side of the infield by himself. And you know, put the kid that played short a lot in the minor leagues up the middle, and that's Tomlinson. Come in. And Tomlinson makes the catch. So clearly, the defensive positioning working today. All right, time now for our player of the game. It is brought to you by Honda, and we think that Eugenio Suarez is that guy today. That was the big swing of the bat. That was back in the first inning, a two run shot. He winds up having a two for three day with three RBIs so far. He's our player of the game. Brought to you by Honda, Eugenio Suarez. Here he takes a strike. That's where Law really wants to keep that pitch. And at times in certain counts even lower than that. Hit up the middle. Tomlinson is going to try mightily but it'll be late. It'll be an infield hit for Suarez. Perfectly placed. Man when you're hot you're hot you get hits like that. That's Perfect. what happens when you're the Honda player of the game man you get good breaks. Yes you do. And Wait till he sees the gift he's going to get. It's true. With the little bird left on the rock. Here's Adam Duvall. Assuming these guys were teammates for a while. Good assumption. Duvall came up through the Giants organization. He and Derek Law played again together at a couple levels. And a base hit. All right, stay tuned immediately after Giants baseball for Esurance Giants post game live highlights, reaction, analysis. It's all coming up right after the game.
Ramon Cabrera is going to be the hitter. Bounces this one to Belt. Belt to Law, and Law just reached back and grabbed it. Stepped on the bag, and that ends the inning. Last chance for the Giants. Red seven, Giants three. Rockies. It'll be a seven o'clock game pregame live at six thirty. You'll see it right here on CSN Bay Area. Plus pre and post game coverage with Giants insider Alex Pavlovich. The home of the authentic Giants fan is right here on CSN. And you can see the matchups. Matt Kame taking on Chris Russell tomorrow. Then Madison Bumgarner, Chad Bettis on Friday, Johnny Cueto, John Gray on Saturday, and Jeff Samarja, Eddie Butler will be the finale on Sunday. And uh, so join us if you would all games on CSN Bay Area. When it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up in break experts. So Ross Ollendorf the new pitcher for the Reds is what he has done in 12 games three and two with a six zero ERA but 13 strikeouts at 12 innings just 10 base runners allowed. He's got good stuff you'll see low to mid 90s with the fastball. Curveball slider changeup and an exaggerated windup. But he's also pitching for history here. The Reds bullpen has allowed runs in 21 straight games, and they're trying to stop that. Trevor Brown is one for three. Ollendorf's got the 1940s windup, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Hit out into right center field for Jay Bruce. One out. Holt is now in left field. And Hamilton is in center. And here's Tomlinson who's two for three. Pitch is low. Mac Williamson's on deck. And a call strike. That is the old time windup. It really is. I kind of missed it. 
<laughs> you don't see many of those anymore. Reds are kind of looking for a closer. In this tough period that their bullpen has gone through. J.J. Hoover who was supposed to be the closer. Kind of fell out of favor. So it's kind of bullpen by committee right now. now well this is not a safe situation. I vote for Rush just because of his windup. Uh, that's a good one. You know, you watched it like this for years, and not everybody, but most guys did that. Well, that's just a huge step back with his left leg, and then he steps back with his right leg, and that's something you don't see very often. Left leg drops back, right leg drops back, then he walks into the rubber. It's just a lot of moving parts, and in this era where pitching coaches profess to take motion out get more compact in fact even completely disregarding the windup and go full time out of the stretch it is refreshing to see a little throwback to an earlier generation step back step back step in all you really worry about the pitching coach is just when you get to that position when you're lifting up your left leg as a right hand pitcher that you're balanced on that back leg. When you lift that leg up, you should be able to hold your balance on that back leg. If the guy says stop, you should be able to stop and stand on one leg. And Ollendorf can. I mean, he's balanced before he starts home. Two. A one hopper to Phillips, two down. And here's Williamson. All right, here's the foul ball, scrum. Come on. Gamer babes are diving right in. They are not backing off anything. Come on. The ladies horse laughing everybody. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Did she get it? Here's Mac Williamson and he takes outside for a ball. All right everybody regroup get back in reload those seats. Oh. Give it to the chick come on. If you just beat four women for the ball, you cannot celebrate. No, you cannot. That is part of the rules. You can't even smile. Two balls and no strikes. Swing and a miss. I do believe that's what the manager likes to see. Guys like Mac Williamson do. In 2 0 counts, 1 0 counts, 3 0, 3 1 counts, you better believe it. Get after it. Line down the left field line, and that's a one hopper up against the wall. Williamson headed in a hurry, and he'll make it. So Denard Spann is going to have a chance to hit. Well, he hits top spin liner. I mean, that thing was smoked. Now, Duvall's out of the game. He's got the better arm. And one thing, though, Mac Williamson, even at his size, 6'4, 235, he can run a little bit. Yes, he can. He's hit two balls really hard today. One to right field and that last one. So here's Spam. Got good arms in center with Hamilton, good arm with Jay Bruce and right. Real good arms. Down the right field line, and that's a fair ball. Coming in to score is Williamson. Span into second base with a double. Inch closer, and that's 20. 
two consecutive outings from the bullpen to allow runs. And he did not wait around. I mean, he was jumping on the first fastball that he could see, and it was right out there on the tee. As Joe Garagiola used to say, room service. Well, we met his grandson today, Chris. Works in the PR department here for the Reds. Here's Duffy. Duffy takes high, one ball and no strikes. There's a streak Mike's talking about. Not a streak the Reds are that happy about. No, I mean, it, it's just a lot of bad luck, too. Duffy spins and fouls it out of play. Right now, the tying run is in the on deck circle, and that would be Hunter Pence. And that's Matt Duffy's job. Get that time run in the batter's box. And to do that, he's got to get on base any way he can. And it's really not about getting the run in, it's about getting on base. So now it's one and two. So Duffy down to his last strike. Break a ball down the dirt ahead in the count one two and the fish are not biting. So a good take from Duffy's perspective. Yeah, he's still believing. In and out of the glove of Cabrera so Duffy gets new life. Well, he just scuffed the red stitch on that one. So Cabrera the catcher going to come out and say hey. He can't hit your fastball. Throw that again. Okay. Either that or he says it's supposed to rain and I have to pee. Let's so go. one of the two. Absolutely. It's coming in. Out of play. And there was that high fastball. And Duffy did well to keep the top hand on that one. Happy customers. It's two balls, two strikes. Foul ball never disappoints. He got him, and that's the ball game. Is Cabrera will throw him out, and the Reds salvage a game in this series, and they win this one on getaway day for the Giants. And a little too much for the Reds offensively, and it was the long ball that hurt Jake Peavy. Well, and it's the very first time that Jake Peavy in his 14 year career has ever lost to Cincinnati. So the Giants now come home on a three and three road trip. And indeed they will. Rockies tomorrow night. Final score here at Great American Ballpark. The Reds seven, the Giants four. Stay tuned, East Insurance Giants Post Game Live. That's going to start right now.